Hello and welcome back to Gapy's Garden. Today we're in the backyard and we are getting ready to unwrap our fig trees that we wrapped last year before winter. So I don't see any freezing temperatures in the forecast in the near future, so I decided this would be a good time to get them unwrapped. Now it can be detrimental to leave the wrapping on for too long because once it starts getting warmed up, it could actually fry your fig trees. And we have had a couple of warm days, so I'm not sure what we're gonna find when we unwrap it, but we're gonna start with the Olympian here. So when I wrapped this tree, it had some little baby figs on it, which could have been Braba figs that will ripen this spring. So we'll take a look and see if they're still there. All right, let's take a closer look here. I don't really see any figs, so they might have fallen off. And there's still a little bit of green on these. It's hard to tell if there's any life in these. We'll just have to wait till it warms up and see if they start budding out or getting any leaves. The tops of the fig don't look too great. It looks like that is kind of turning a little bit white and a darker color. So that is not really a good sign. So we'll have to, actually it looks like there is maybe one baby fig still on there that looks like it might be okay. We'll have to check back in another month or two and see how it looks. Well, I have a little correction to make. This one is actually the Olympian fig. The one that we just unwrapped is the, the Laterula. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Olympian and hopefully it looks a little better. All right, let's take a closer look at this one. This one, the wood on this tree looks actually a lot better than the Laterula. You can see there's actually some green growth coming out of some of the tips right there. Looks like a little bit on this one and also this one here on the back. So this one is looking much, much better. So hopefully, and also the wood feels more, a little bit more alive, not so dry like the other one. Now we've got one more to unwrap. Our last tree here is the Desert King. This is our tallest tree, but it had the most green on the branches when I covered it up last year. So I knew it would not survive the winter if I left it uncovered because it wasn't properly lignifying. We're gonna take this, this is a Texas tomato cage that I have around it to keep it from falling over in the snow and the wind. Well guys, this one does not look really that great at all. This branch here, it could have happened when we had some snow, but this branch completely broke off from the bottom here. So that that's really not good. And then these other branches that are here, they just feel kind of light and dry, which is a lot like what the other one felt like, the Laterula. So I'm not sure, this one may end up dying back to the ground yet again this year, which is a bummer because it had a lot of great growth last year. And I was really hoping for some Braba crop on it, but we may have to start over on the Desert King. Before we call it a day, I'm gonna do one more thing with our fig trees, and that is paint on this Ivy Organic three-in-one plant guard. So this is gonna protect our fig trees against sunburn, insects, and rodents. So I did have a bit of a rodent problem last year with my Desert King fig tree. We had a little rabbit that, at least I think it was a rabbit, it could have been a rat or a mouse, but it pretty much ate the bark all around the base of the tree. Since these trees were covered all winter long, they haven't really seen any sun. So now that we have them unwrapped, if we have a really sunny day, that could do a lot of damage because they're not really used to the sun right now. Um, but it also helps throughout the summertime when it is really hot and sunny. 
And this really isn't an uncommon practice. There are a lot of people that paint latex paint onto their, their trees. And really that is not a good idea. For one thing, it is not a porous material. So the tree can't breathe when you paint it with latex paint. And also that paint will chip and fall into your soil. And really you do not want paint chips in your soil. At least I do not. Um, but this is an all organic product. Let me just show you some of the ingredients that are in there. So the paint itself is made of iron oxide, limestone, mica, milk, silica, methyl cellulose, and diatomaceous earth. But this also comes with some good smelling essential oils. The essential oils is what helps protect it against the insects. And that's the castor oil, cinnamon oil, clove oil, garlic oil, peppermint oil, rose oil, and spearmint oil. So I bet this stuff smells really good. So let's go ahead and open it up and get it mixed. Here is the vial that has our essential oils in it. And then this is the powder that we'll need to add some water to. So because this has diatomaceous earth in it, you wanna be careful not to breathe this because this could get stuck in your lungs and it doesn't come out easily once it does. So doing it outside downwind is probably a good idea. Or you could wear a mask or hold your breath. We're gonna start with a, a little bit of water about halfway up the can. And then we're gonna go ahead and add in our essential oils. You can tell it smells good already. Now we're going to, I've just got a stir stick for a paint, paint stir stick, and we're just going to give that a good mix. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit more water. So because this is a breathable product, it really helps to add this to any wounds on a tree and it will help the tree heal itself. When you add something that seals the wound, it's not able to heal itself as easily. All right, I think we are looking pretty good. We'll just add a touch more water. You can make this as really as thin or as thick as you'd like. All right, let's get this painted on. So I mentioned the diatomaceous earth that's in here. That is one of the main ingredients and it's like little shards of, of glass to insects. So they don't like to climb on, on that. And that's what helps protect it against those insects. So we're putting on a fairly thick coat here and it is totally fine to paint over any buds that may have figs or leaves coming out. Since it's a breathable paint, it should have no problem with that. Now, if you use a latex paint, that may not be the case. Now, this paint does not store well once you mix it, so make sure that you use as much as you can after you mix it, or maybe not mix all of it if you don't plan on using a lot of it. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Now, I will say you, you will wanna reapply this product every year so it doesn't stay on for all eternity. So I plan on painting my in-ground fig trees um, every spring, especially if I wrap them. And I may even do some painting on some of my container figs as well. Well, I went ahead and did all of the fig trees. Here is the laterula. We've got all the branches painted about halfway up the tree or bush and here is our olympian and then lastly we've got our desert king so i'm not sure if these guys are going to die back to the ground again or not i am in zone 8b and really these should not die to the ground because they're not lignifying properly in the fall they're just not surviving the winter so that is the reason i covered them this year to see if that would help and so far I'm not sure it helped. So if you're interested in purchasing this three-in-one plant guard, you can find it on Amazon or from the Ivy Organic website. But if you get it from their website, you can use my 10% off discount code. It's GAPY10. They've also got some really great fertilizers that I've been using for the past several years, and they've got free shipping. So be sure to check that out. I'll put links in the description of my video where you can get the products. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you again soon. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. You can also find me on Instagram, Twitter, 
and Facebook.